Yo, good afternoon, good evening. This is your coach, Renz, and um, I want to talk to you guys today about something that I get a lot of questions about. And that question really is concerning people who, when they, they walk away from traditional religions, they're walking away from Christianity, Islam, Judaism, whatever isms that they're walking away from, they'll often ask me the question of, well, what do I do next? Well, what do I do now? What do I believe in now? What do I follow now? What is my philosophy now? And I got to tell you, the thing about it is, it's not so much about believing anything as much as it is about a knowing and it's about a being instead of believing. Let me, let me get you into a diff different understanding. Many people feel like they have to believe in something, right? That there is a creator. Now, I believe, first and foremost, that there is a creator. You don't have to agree with me on that one. If you're atheist, then that's your prerogative. But I believe that there is an intelligent creator. There is a living mind that has created all these things as a mental thought. Now, that's hard for some people because we've, been, we've grown up in a society where you have to have a deity. It has to have a name. It has to have characteristics. It has to be humanized. And that is where the problem lies, is that we've been conditioned, people have been conditioned to believe that their God must have human-like qualities because throughout history, no matter what ancient culture, current culture, no matter what, they have always humanized what they deem as God. This is what man does. And when people come to me and say, okay, I, I can't do that anymore. I, I can't follow this book. I can't follow that book. But I'm afraid to leave it because then I'm left empty with nothing to follow. I said in another video how every person requires certainty. And in the book that I'm writing, How to Find Your Divine Soulmate, um, it talks about, I talk about in a, in a brief part about how everybody must find certainty. We like certainty. We like to be, um, we like to know that the person who's with us loves us, cares for us, that they are, they have our best interest at heart. We have to know this. We need this. It's a certainty. When people walk away from religion, they need a certainty. They want a certainty. A certainty that what they're doing is not going to be blasphemous against whatever it is that created the universe. They want a certainty that when this is all done, that their death won't be in vain, that they, are, they will follow and flow to the next understanding, the next level of creation, that their mind, will, their consciousness will continue to exist. So they need a philosophy. They're looking for something else. This is why many people leave Christianity and go to Islam, or they leave Islam and they come to Christianity, or leave, they leave uh, Judaism or Christianity and they go to Buddhism. They, they, they usually people will gravitate to another system, another philosophy. But I want to talk to you guys about a philosophy, a system that has always been around. And here's the great, one of the greatest warnings of it is that it warns to never be codified. You see, every philosophy and every religion is based off the hermetic views, the, the hermetic laws, the natural laws, the laws of attraction, whatever you want to call it, the universal laws. They're all based on this, these, these things that were written on the Emerald Tablets. And, and, and when I say they all, I mean they all from 12,000 years to now, they're all based on this. Whatever there was before that time frame, because I do not, there's too much evidence that the world has been here longer than, than 6,000 years and certainly longer than 12,000 as well. But our most ancient writings are eight to 12,000 years old and all of them stem from the Hermetics, what's on the Emerald Tablets, what's in the um, Corpus Hermeticum, the Kabbalion. You, if you read any other religion, any other philosophy, they all will go back to that. They all eventually end up there. So in my research and in my journey, what I did was go back to the original, go back as far as I possibly can. We can't go further than that because there is nothing as of yet. We have, there's nothing been discovered. So you can't go any further than that. But understanding these hermetics, understanding the, the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence, the law of um, cause and effect, the law of gender, the law of rhythm, and the law of polarity, without understanding these laws, then you really find yourself following an ism. But when I teach someone, when I work with somebody, what I get them to understand is that this is where you start. Build your mind on this philosophy. Because in the philosophy of the, the Hermetic, it, like I said, it tells you first of all, don't codify it. It's not to be codified. It's a journey for you. It's a personal journey only for you. As a guide, all I can do is, is teach you what it means and different ways of implementing it in your life. We will all have different ways of implementing this. Every, some people want to codify it in forms of magic, black magic, white magic, in, in the idea of sex magic, alchemy, 
um, you know, they want to do it their way. They want to have like, their own code. And then later on, it became codified in religions and deities, you know, placed above it. But you, you can, and, and, and it's okay to figure out which rituals you want to do because we have to remember that if we actually go to the original, the rituals are only there, only there to give you a physical representation of how to get your mind to a certain state. That is the only purpose of a ritual. The ritual has no other purpose. The ri if, if, if you believe that you're saved by a ritual, if you believe that you become divine by a ritual, then you've missed the entire point. You missed the whole point of the ritual, right? It's like if you saw my video on creating, on getting rid of bad habits and creating new habits, the, the format of creating a new habit is basically you following a ritual. If you want to create the habit of waking up at 4.30 every morning, you set your alarm and boom, it wakes you up at 4.30, your body will eventually get used to that rhythm. And as it gets used to that rhythm, it will start just waking up at 4.30. It will be times you don't set your clock and it will wake up at 4.30. You'll set your clock and say, well, I don't have to get up till 7. But guess what happens? You wake up at 4.30 anyway. Just like if you work five days a week and you, you have a tendency on Saturday, if you work Monday through Friday on Saturday, you have a tendency to wake up at the same time you normally or roughly around that same time. It's a rhythm because you, you committed yourself to a ritual. So remember, if, if, if I ever tell you to do a ritual, if I ever talk about meditation, when, when I talk, and I, if I ever, when I talk about these things, these rituals are not to code, not for you to be codified into a religion, but it's just there to get you into an understanding, to a mental state of being. And that's what it's all about. It's about getting into that mental state of being, not a belief. You see, when you believe something, then you have a hope for. You have a I don't know and I don't know and I don't I don't understand. And you have a I just hope instead of being, instead of knowing. It's like the Tao talks about that a man who lives in the past is living in fear. A man who lives in the future is living in anxiety. But a man who lives in the present, in the present, is living in peace. Because the man in the past is looking at the me. The man in, 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 in the future is looking at the I but the man in the present is just being, right? It's, you're just being. Like, you can't already know what your next thought is. You can't stop your next thought. But the only thing you really have right now is your current thought, being in the present. That is your being. You don't know what you're going to feel in the next 20 minutes. You know what you felt in the past, but what you feel right now is you being. Your breath happens right now. You are a being. This is why in certain meditation it says focus on your breath. That breath right now. Not the breath you had last week. Not the breath that you're going to have. But your current breath. So that you come into a state of being. So it's about living in the now, the present. And when you live in the now and the present, you start to begin, you begin to understand the mental. How uh, the law of mentalism talks about how the all is mental and the all you know, creates through thought and that we are all, we are of that and we create through thought first. And then we, we you, you may want to have a baby and you know the physical aspects of having the baby, but until you first think of it, it does not happen. You have to think of the baby. It's a thought first. The baby is always a thought first. You might want to invent something, but it's a thought first. You may want to have a house or build a house, but it's a thought first. You want a job, but it's a thought first. Whatever you Whatever it is you desire, whether it's in your conscious mind as a thought or your subconscious as a thought. And I know some people say, well, I didn't think about having a baby, it just happened. No, if you thought about, if your subconscious or your conscious thought about having intercourse with a man or a woman, then one in that subconscious or conscious brain was the thought of a child being produced. Because, and you can't help it. You, you can't stop it. It just is what it is. So, when, so I just want to get back to the point. The point is... When, when people say, well, where, what are you teaching? Especially the ones who ask me, what are you teaching? If you're not teaching God of the Christianity or God of Islam or God of Judaism or God of, of any isms, then what are you guiding people towards? What are you teaching people? What I'm teaching people, first and, first and foremost, is how to think for themselves and not think based on what somebody else has decided they should be thinking. If you're reading anything that is, that, that, that is telling you what God is, you see the, the, the hermetics, the one of the first things it tells you that, that that the creator is infinite mind, but we are finite mind. And as a finite mind, a finite being, we can't fathom infinite being. We can't fathom infinity. Try to fathom infinity. Try to fathom 
the universe being infinite. You really can't. As much as you may try, you will still put a cap on the universe. There will be an expanse. An expanse can be great, but it will cap. It will stop. It will get to a point where that's it. That's all you can fathom. You can't fathom that. Try to fathom a creator, a living mind. In truth, you can't. You can't really understand the full complexity, the full breadth of a living mind. That in all of his thoughts, it, it thought of all of this beyond. So the fact that you're trying to, the fact that a religion says that that living mind has jealousies and, and anger and all these kind of things, that's like saying gravity has anger and gravity has jealousy. Gravity doesn't care. Gravity just is gravity. Living mind is just living mind. And we have these hermetic laws that are laws, not principles. Principles can be broken. Laws cannot be broken. So when you try to fathom that, when you try to put a cap on it, you've already started out wrong. You've already started out trying to put a control mechanism on it. So when I teach people, it's like, first, you have to understand that you will never, never fully understand the infinite living mind. You, what you can understand, though, is what the living infinite mind has put in place for us to be able to develop our consciousness so that we become greater conscious beings than what we are that things like heaven and hell are really mental constructs that we create for ourselves, that it is not something that the living mind has created for us, but we create it. We determine it. We condition ourselves for these things. So to break free from that idea means a reconditioning to a thought process that says that I have the authority and the ability to create my heaven, to create my hell, to create my presence, to create my future that I have the ability to perceive time as I perceive it, to perceive life as I perceive it. Because at the end of the day, we all vibrate, we are all energy. And here's the thing about it, in the law of vibration, it says that nothing ever ceases from vibrating. All things vibrate. If all things vibrate, then how can there be death? Death is a total cessation of life. Life meaning that there is no more vibration within you or your body or your consciousness, your energy. So if, the, if you're always vibrating, always, then you are always existing. Then you have always existed. It's a big thing to conceive. Now we can't even conceive that. So how do you think somebody can conceive the living mind? How somebody can conceive the creator of all things? We make up our excuses, we make up ways and all that. But I wanted to answer that question for a, a, a lot of people who have been asking, um, where do they go? Where do they go now? How do I develop spiritually? This is, when I do spiritual coaching, this is one of the first things that we work on, that we think about, that we talk about, is coming to that understanding that you do not have to follow somebody's doctrine, especially a doctrine filled with holes, filled with historical inaccuracies, historical evidence that are contrary to it, or no historical facts whatsoever, that it was truly made up in the mind of a man and not the mind of a living, not the living mind of the creator. So, and, and your goal should be to beyond, go beyond the living mind of, of a man who wrote something. Whether it is Islam, Judaism, Christianity, Buddhism, the Tao, whatever they are, I don't care, it doesn't really matter, some dude wrote it, right? And if that dude wrote it, then there's a flaw in it. But understanding the Hermetics, yeah, a being wrote it, but it's as close, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's as close as we have. It's as accurate as we have. And if somebody wrote something, if you wrote a story today, and then a thousand, five thousand years later, somebody else writes a story based on your story, but then add things that are relative to their community, their culture, how they live, uh, making them sit higher than the other person, than their neighbors, then why should you accept their story as truth, as the truth? when it's built on somebody else's story and that somebody else's story is has them trying to put the other group down. So, no, this doesn't work that way. If you really wanna know as much truth as you possibly can, go to the Hermetics. And even at that, the Hermetics says that there is more beyond what it is teaching you. So, I mean, when a, when a document, when a, when a situation, a philosophy says that there is more beyond what it teaches you, that it ha doesn't have the ability to get you to the, to, to the highest of highest levels, but it can get you to the next few levels so that when you get there, when your consciousness reaches there, then the, 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 the 
wisdom will be given to you. I mean, as it says, the lips of wisdom are closed except to the ears of understanding. And that's for every mental plane that you may exist on. So y'all have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is not negotiable. And please go to my website, coachrens.com forward slash coaching and purchase my book, How to Escape Mental Welfare or sign up for my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash coachrens. Have a great day.